Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. Let's start that timer, which you might notice is a little bit different than in previous videos. There we go. Uh, today we are going to be talking about complementary intervals, and that's complementary with an E, not an I. Complementary intervals. So it's not intervals that are saying, hey, you look great today. It's uh, a little bit different than that. So complementary intervals are useful for a lot of things, and the reason I'm bringing them up now is because we're going to use complementary intervals and the concept of complementary intervals in determining some of the larger intervals. So a complementary interval is an interval that when added to another interval equals an octave, a perfect octave specifically. For example, a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth are complementary intervals. Minor third and a major sixth are complementary intervals. Something you might notice that's a little bit strange is that when we do the math here, that the two numbers actually equal nine, but then it's, they somehow equal a perfect octave as well. If you watch some of the previous videos, I explained a little bit about why we have this sort of mathematical problem. Uh, so you just have to sort of take my word for it for right now. You could do the work and figure out all of these, but I'm going to show you a quick way of determining complementary intervals. So first, we need to talk about the qualities that exist, starting from diminished, minor, perfect, major, and augmented. So that's from the smallest to the biggest qualities of intervals that we know of, and that really realistically exists. Diminished and augmented intervals are opposite of each other. Major and minor intervals are opposite of each other, and perfect interval is its own opposite. I guess maybe that's why it's called perfect. Not really, but um, this is important when determining com uh, complementary intervals because the two intervals that are complements of each other will have opposite qualities. And then the numbers will always equal nine, and that's the sizes of the intervals. So the size is always equal nine, and the qualities are opposite of each other. So keeping that in mind, this is quite easy. And then I'll show you, if we have time, uh, how it sort of looks on the staff. So if we take a minor second, for example, so we want to figure out what is the complementary interval to a minor second. The opposite quality of minor is major. So minor to major is the opposite quality. So minor second to a major something, and then two uh, plus the next interval need to equal 9, or you could just do 9 minus 2, I guess, and that's 7. Therefore, the complementary interval to a minor second is a major seventh. That sounded like a mouthful, so let me do a couple others really quickly so you can see how this works. Let's do a diminished interval this time, a diminished third, and then we need to find the opposite quality, which is augmented. Diminished to augmented is opposite, and the opposite is true as well, augmented to diminished. And then 9 minus 3 is 6. It's really as easy as that. Now, um, there will be some supplementary material for this video if you want to see some more examples of this. But let me quickly, before we're out of time, show you how this is implemented on the staff. So if I take an F here, and then I write an A, this interval is a major, whoops, I was going to put a little M. It's a major third from F to A. Now, if I go up here to an octave, F to F, we know that's a perfect octave. So the logic is that the interval that's left here from the A up to the F should be the complement of a major third. So the complement of a major third, if we do what, just what we did, major third plus what? 9 minus 3 is 6. The opposite of major is minor. Therefore, this is a minor sixth. Now, you might have to watch this a few times to really get that in your head, but once you get this down, it's extremely useful for finding out the larger intervals, in particular sixths and sevenths, which we will have a video about next. Thank you.